Miss Melinda here, your spiritual worker from Miss Melinda's Metaphysical Services.com, here to give you some tips and instructions for how to work your sweet jar at home. Sometimes when a practitioner creates your jar for you, they send it to you so that you may perform the magic and work the jar on your own. When I create a sweet jar for you, I give you the option to have the jar shipped to you after I perform the initial spell work with the jar. So here are some tips and instructions about how to continue to work your jar on your own should you choose to do so. When you receive your jar, I recommend that you hold it in your left hand and place your right hand on top of the jar and pray over the jar or send energy into the jar. This is called charging the jar. You can send energy through spiritual channeling by allowing universal or divine or spiritual energy to channel through you and out of your hand and into the jar. You can send energy into the jar through raising energy in a number of different practices and then sending that raised energy into the jar. You can also chant over the jar or say affirmations over the jar. Some kind of personal ritual designed to create a link between you and your intention and the jar is highly recommended and this can be achieved through prayer, through charging, through channeling or through chanting or through positive affirmations spoken over the jar. Try to speak to the jar in some way and try to send energy into the jar in some way. That's going to be your initial step. Secondly, you can place DNA inside of the jar. Now, many people traditionally recommend that you should not open a jar after it's already been completed and that doing so will break the spell. I tend to disagree. I will open jars in order to refresh them, revitalize them, revive them, and in order to continue to work them with more potency. You may open your jar and place some of your DNA into the jar or some DNA of a target into the jar. So hair, for example, or nail clippings. You could also use personal effects like a piece of clothing and place that inside the jar. You may also breathe life into the jar at that time. To continue to work your jar, it's recommended that you shake the jar. Shaking the jar assists with shaking up the energy inside of the jar. Of course, shaking the jar on its own isn't quite enough. You want to be imbuing the jar with intention or imbuing the jar with energy as you shake it. So you want to be concentrating on your intention, concentrating on your goal, concentrating on your end result. You can do this through visualization. You can do this through chanting or even singing or prayer work. Speak to your work. Breathe life into your work. And remember, I'm not telling you the right way or the only way. I'm just giving you information about what works for me from my experience, from my perspective, and from my practices. Another way that you can work with your jar is to charge your jar with solar energy or with lunar energy. Leave it outside under the rays of the sun or the rays of the moon in order to charge it with that energy and heighten the power of the work. Enhance it, revitalize it, and get those energies flowing. Of course, it's recommended that you burn candles in conjunction with your jar. You want to correspond those candles to your intentions. If you want to enhance that energy, then you would also bless or charge your candles, speak to your candles. You want to dress your candles with a corresponding oil to enhance the energy. Burn candles in conjunction with your intentions. And when you burn those candles, use some of the same tools and techniques that we've already spoken about, chanting or prayer or affirmations or visualizing. 
You can correspond the work with your jar to a weekly schedule, a daily schedule, or a monthly schedule. If you want to correspond it to a weekly schedule, you would want to use a day of the week that corresponds with your magic, such as Thursdays for money or Fridays for love. If you would like to work your, jandal, your jar in correspondence with a monthly schedule, you'll want to align that with a moon face that corresponds to your goal, such as the full moon for love. When you get your jar at home and begin to work with it, you will want to place it somewhere in your home that corresponds to the energy that you're drawing into your life. If you're drawing love into your life, you can place your jar in your bedroom. If you're drawing money into your life, you can place your, draw, your jar in the kitchen or next to your front door and so forth. So I hope this helps you with some of the ways to work your jar magic and I wish you all many, many blessings. Be well.